Hey guys, welcome to my first drive one take video on this brand new BMW 550e xDrive Saloon. This particular one is in M Sport Pro trim. I'm down here at the SMMT day and the order of today is I get the chance to drive a lot of cars from a lot of manufacturers but I only get each car for 15 or 20 minutes max, hence this being a one take slightly rushed video but hopefully I can cover as much as possible during my time with this car. A bit earlier on, I did film the 530e, which is essentially the cheaper version of this one. You couldn't call it cheap because it's still 60 grand base, but it's 20,000 pounds less than this. And the biggest difference, on paper at least, is instead of having the four cylinder two litre turbocharged B48, this 550e comes with one of my favorite engines of all time, the B58. So that's a three liter inline six turbocharged unit, which on its own is really impressive. It is detuned compared to other BMW combustion only engined B58s. It's producing 313 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. The electric motor alone is producing 197 horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. So the torque figure is about 10% more in this 550e from the electric motor than in the 530e. I don't know why that is. In terms of battery, well, this has a 19.4 kilowatt hour battery, which BMW claim will give it an electric only range of around 60 miles, which is impressive and should be enough for most people. And like the 530e that I tried earlier on, this 550e comes with a 60 litre fuel tank, meaning that the combustion only side of it isn't really compromised apart from having a cart around that extra hybrid weight, the batteries and the motors, etc. In terms of weight, this is about 2.2 tonnes, so it's about 100 kilos heavier than the 530e, and I'd say the majority of that is because of the bigger lump under the bonnet. That B58 does come with a lot of radiators and it's a lot of engines, so it does weigh and add up. Now, I really liked the 530e. I thought it was an impressive piece of kit. It's not trying to be an M car, it's just trying to be a 5 Series plug-in hybrid and it does a very good job of that. And I'm expecting bigger things from this because you're paying an extra £20,000 essentially to have that six cylinder lump. But before we talk about its driving dynamics and push on for another lap around this road course, I just want to talk about these seats. This one has some kind of package, I think it's a Comfort Pro Pack or whatever, that means that the sports seats are deleted and you get these comfort seats. And I have to say that the comfort seats are nowhere near as good or comfortable or supportive as the sports seats. So don't go for the comfort seats. These are the seats that were in the i5 M60 that I tried back end of last year, which was 120 odd thousand pounds. And I remember commenting and saying that the seats were nothing special. And these seats really aren't much to talk about. They don't look particularly good either. So if you can, and I know it might be impossible if you need things in that comfort package, if you can try and avoid going for the comfort seats because they're not as good in terms of comfort or in terms of support as the sport seats. And that doesn't surprise me because BMW have always made fantastic sport seats that are not only supportive, but are very comfortable in the process. And that's exactly what you want. I mean, look at the seats that were in the F90 M5 or cars like the X5M. Back to talking about the running gear of this car. When you combine the B58 with the electrical motor, it has a maximum combined output of 489 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque. So not far off cars like the 550i from the previous generation 5 series which was an absolute rocket ship and i'm hoping that when we start pushing on like with the 530e the calibration between that combustion engine and the electrical energy is really really smooth and you almost don't notice it aside from hearing that b58 fire up so we'll experiment with that shortly what does all that power and torque 
mean in terms of acceleration? Well, this is an X drive, so we've got plenty of grip. We've got the ZF 8 speed automatic gearbox, and BMW claim that this will do the 0 to 62 sprint in 4.3 seconds, which is very, very impressive, and I'm sure fast enough for the majority of people because, once again, like the 530e, this isn't pretending or claiming to be a full fat M car, it just happens to have a few M badges scattered around it because it's an M Sport Pro trim, which is very different to an M car. But in the past, M Sport Pro trim cars usually meant that the ride quality was somewhat sacrificed and your fillings might fall out. I've noticed with BMW's very latest offerings, like this new 5 Series, that although it is relatively stiffly sprung, it needs to be because it's 2.2 tonnes, the ride quality is actually really good. This is on the non-option 20-inch wheels that almost look too small, can you believe it? That's just how big cars have got. This is over five meters long. And it's clad with Michelin's brilliant E-Primacy tires, which are the most efficient tire uh, on the market. But the combination of a slightly bigger tire wall and whatever BMW have done with the setup and suspension, really good, uh, really, really impressive. These roads really do mimic a typical A and B road in the UK, okay, without some of the horrible potholes that we get. For this last bit, I'm gonna push on a little bit. So I'm gonna come down here to my modes, put it into sport, which definitely fires up that B58. I'm gonna pull this gear selector back to give me sports automatic, pull one of these paddles. So I now have manual and theoretically, I should have almost 500 horsepower and definitely feels that way. It really, really goes. That torque feel, which I could really feel in the 530E, well now it's just been elevated to another level because not only have we got all that instant electrical energy, but we've got the wonderful B58. I tell you what, you're aware of the weight, but once again, BMW have done a fantastic job of disguising this car's mass and remember we're on a Michelin efficiency tyre we're not on a PS4S or a Cup 2 <laughs> this is just unreal really really impressive I mean the engine though is somewhat subdued you don't really hear too much of it but I'll tell you what if you're in a hurry this would be a very fast point to point cross country car Wow, wow. <laughs> Once again, that ride quality, now we're pushing a bit harder. We're sitting in the travel a little bit. It feels even better, if anything. Front end grip, unreal. It's unbelievably fast. You can really feel the momentum though. I mean, I'm sitting here, I'm aware that I'm almost two and a half tons, but it slows down and just goes so well. <laughs> you can't hear much, it's so well insulated that you can't hear much wind noise or tire roar. In fact, it has so much pickup that I think it would be the ideal car to maybe be a little bit naughty and attempt to jump over this last bit of the road course. Just give those cars in front a little bit of a gap. And then, here we go. <laughs> well, I didn't manage to jump the 530E, but I definitely managed to jump the 550E then. Oh, the punch it had out of that turn was just unreal. And uh, once again, feeling all that momentum up in the air. Wow, but the way it lands, it's just so well damped, so well set up. The chassis of this is unreal. Really, really impressive bit of kit. It's been interesting today because my first experience of the new 5 Series was the i5 M60 Saloon with these comfort seats. It felt a bit too hard edged. It was lightning fast in a straight line, but I just didn't feel like I was sort of involved with anything. I felt very disconnected from that car completely. 
to the point that I had that car for I think just over a week and I used it probably four or five times because I just wasn't excited about it. It was like, okay, I've got to review it tomorrow. Let's review it. There's the keys, see you later. Whereas straight away, even in the four cylinder 530E today, I feel more connected to this car. It has a soul, it has a combustion engine and I know some of you might be sick and tired of me talking about that, but I think when a car has a combustion engine, it does have a heart, it has some soul, it has a character, and it definitely comes alive a lot better than any electric car will ever do. And this is just lightning fast. I mean, the pickup, we should do a little launch maybe down here where traffic behind can see me. So we just stop here. Hopefully cars behind can see. Just hold it on the brakes. There we go. Oh my God, that, that takeoff is just ridiculous. You've got all that combustion engine stalling up, giving you a, a chunk of torque and power, and then you've got the electrical energy. Let's chase down this Spider RS. Let's see if a five series hybrid can keep a Spider RS honest and that's on cup twos this is on <laughs> e premises through this section the porsche should be miles quicker i mean there's no denying that is just a stunning car in front isn't it limit of 55 miles an hour on here and yeah I mean I'm maybe just nudging that at the moment these two hybrids have really changed my outlook on the BMW 5 series not sold on the i5 I wish they still did a 530d because that would undoubtedly be the best car and the best recipe but they don't and this is I guess the next best thing but 80 grand base it's not cheap, is it? <laughs> oh, I'm such a child. I am such a child. <laughs> Before I drop this car back to BMW, as this is a one take video, I'm gonna give it a rating like I did with the 530e and various other one take videos I've shot this year. The first one is practicality just like the 530e i'm going to give it a seven and a half because it is very practical in here but it's also a very big car on the outside it's more than five meters long we've already talked about the side of it and how big it is in terms of 20 inch wheels not quite filling the arches the boot is a little bit restricted in the way that it sort of juts out the side but at the same time it's very big don't know the size of it but it's very deep i'm sure it's relatively useful but it's nowhere near as big in my opinion, or useful as the outgoing 5 Series that was a much cleaner shape. So I'm gonna give practicality a seven and a half out of 10. Next thing to talk about is driving dynamics. And although it's not pretending to be an M3 or an M5, I have to remember that it's 2.2 tons of plug-in hybrid family car. And when you consider all of that, well, I think it's really impressive. It's not the sort of thing I'd probably get up early on a Sunday to take and drive along my favorite road, but if I happen to be on a road trip and find myself on a nice Alpine road, well, it's not gonna embarrass itself. It feels really, really good in that aspect. So I'm gonna give it a 7.5, which is actually the same as I gave the 530E. My reasoning for that is you can feel that the nose is a little bit heavier. So it's actual driving dynamics aren't probably quite as good as the 530E, but when you factor in, you've got that wonderful B58 and that extra power and torque, well, that makes up for it. So it kind of balances out to be a 7.5 in terms of driving dynamics. Value for money. Well, let's ignore that this particular press car is 100,000 pounds with options. Let's strip it back to the base car, which is 80 grand. That's 20,000 pounds more than the 530E. 
so that would be a difficult 20 grand to part with unless you really could benefit from that extra power torque and faint six cylinder soundtrack i would give value for money probably a seven so actually half a point down on the 530e but definitely better than the i5 m60 that i tried and didn't rate i'd probably rate that at a five in terms of value but as an overall package, well, I'm going to give it a 7.5, which is the same I gave the 530e. I think it's really impressive. It does what it says on the tin. It's a far better 5 Series than the i5. It fills me with confidence a lot more. It's a nice product, and everything seems to make a lot of sense. Of course, I would have this 550e xDrive over a 530e, but when you look at the price difference, I think they both score very similar on paper anyway hopefully that all made some sense and hopefully you enjoyed this one take video take it easy and i'll see you at another one very very soon cheers